In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with cloth simulation. There's a cloth simulator in Blender that, with just a few settings, allows you to make dynamic and interesting simulations of cloth interacting with other objects. The first thing we need to do is start in the default scene with the default cube. I'm going to click on it, and then over in the right hand side, I'm going to click on the physics tab, and I'm going to set it to collision. This will allow our cloth to actually collide with this cube. If you want, you can tab into edit mode, press 2 to go to edge mode, and then press control or command B to bevel edges. And then we could add a couple bevels to it, tab back out to object mode, right click and shade smooth. I'm going to switch to material preview so I can see the materials on this. And then I'll click the material here, and I'm just going to change this base color to something a bit more interesting that I can see like that. So now I have a yellow cube, but I need to add some cloth so I can actually simulate the cloth going on this cube. To add a new object, I can press Shift A, then go to Mesh and Plane. This is a small plane, and since we're using simulations, we actually want to do our scaling inside edit mode. So I'll press Tab to go to edit mode. Then I'll press S, and the closer you are to the object when you press S, the faster it will scale. So if you have your cursor over here and you press S, you'll get fine control. But if you have your cursor in the middle, it'll get big or small very quickly. You don't need that big of a piece of cloth, but this is probably good right here. Now, if I go ahead and tab out of edit mode, press G then Z to move up. And then I click on the physics tab and I select cloth in Blender. And now this will collide with this. So I can now just press play and watch the cloth fall and do nothing. That's because right now all the information Blender has to simulate the cloth is a single face. That's not enough information. Before I go further, I'm gonna go ahead and set some materials here. So I'll add a new material, and then I'll change the base color to something a little bit more exciting like this deep orange or red. Right now I'll switch to solid view so you can see what's happening. I need to add a lot more edges. I could subdivide this, but I actually want it to stay relatively square. So I'll press Control R, then I'll hover on this edge and roll my mouse wheel to add a bunch of subdivisions. So this is a pretty good amount of subdivisions. I'll click and then click again. One more time, I'll press Control R in Blender to add edge loops, and then I'll add all these edge loops on the edge here, and I'll click and I'll be done. Now I'll press Tab. And once again, I'll go back to Material Preview. I'll hold Shift and Middle Mouse Button, Pan, and then Middle Mouse Button to Orbit. And I'll start the simulation. As you can see here, now it has enough faces that it can bend. Still not enough to fully do what it needs to do, but at least we can start to see the simulation. When you're working with a cloth simulation, it's best to not divide it too much in the beginning just to see what you have going on. So now we have that cloth interacting, and I'll click on it, and then I'll click on the Modifier tab, and I'll select Subdivision Surface. I'll go ahead and crank this up to two, and we need to make sure that our Subdivision Modifier is before the cloth. That way the cloth has the information to calculate. And now if I press Play, you can see that the cloth is much more active and flowy as it moves. I'm going to go ahead and right click Shade Smooth so it looks a little bit nicer. And so there's a few settings we can do. And to see the settings are inside the Physics tab. So I'll click on Physics tab. And one thing is you notice when the cloth comes down, it kind of all shrinks up and hits itself here. So one thing we can definitely do is under Collisions down at the bottom here, we scroll down on the right, we can turn on Self Collisions. And then we can also just change this dimension to a little bit of a closer distance, and that'll make it more realistic. So now when it falls down, the cloth will hit itself and have a little bit less clipping. You can continue to reduce that amount. You can also, on the object collisions, reduce this amount as well. And so the smaller that gets, then the more it has to calculate and the more accurate it is. Another thing that you can do to quickly improve the quality is up the quality. So I'm doubling it to 10. So now if I watch the simulation, 
it flows a lot better around the object and the self collisions are much better. And then the more subdivisions you add, the more accurate the cloth will behave with its different properties. So if we add a few more subdivisions here, and then we go back to the beginning and we play the simulation, as you can see, with more subdivisions, the cloth has even more realistic bends and folds and deformations. There's lots of other attributes that you can change about the cloth, but this should get you started so you can start playing and dropping tablecloths on all your diner scenes in your animations in Blender. The cloth has a lot of fun properties, and I encourage you to explore it as you continue to learn 3D modeling. Happy 3D modeling!